What is wrong with this guy? I don't know if I should trust him. Um, I'm sorry. Sometimes my emotions are like a disobedient pet. Uncontrollable and often rolling in shit. Better safe than sorry, they say. But I think we are both sorrier than we are safe. A tunnel lies between a nearby watery cave and the place where things are kept. Take the second right from the closed door and you will find what you seek. So are we looking in the tool shed or are we looking... What's this? Excavation and storage. Let's head to the tool shed. I wonder if there's stuff there that we need. Batteries and a flare. A saw. Apparently we can use it. Xeno report. 66B, Phase 9, Anno 9002, Anno Domini 1992, filed by Chief Attending Xeno Officer for the eyes of the leading installation officer only. Leader. Unlike the other findings, 66B appears to be of manufactured rather than natural origin and so warrants additional interest, and need I say security. The bulk of Substance 63 was discovered only six yards from where Artifact 66B was buried and appears, at least in part, to consist of a solidified form of 63 with a number of operable appendages. The artifact emits a low level of light from a seemingly inexhaustible energy supply, suggesting its origin is, in, is indeed as was suspected. Of course, the ramifications of this fact are clear, and appropriate measures are already being taken. Progress in becoming enlightened as to the purpose of the device, if indeed it served a purpose in the traditional sense at all, has been slow. Following protocol to the letter, I assign my secondary officer to the artifact on Phase 7, only for him to go missing the following day. He eventually returned to the site from a previously uncharted area of the mines, presumably having discovered a new route, avoiding the cave-ins. At this stage, we can only assume what transpired, since he remains in a state of disorientation. Far be it for me to question the decisions of the elevated cast, but I am struggling to understand the necessity of conducting standard scientific testing in this case. I, of course, have full faith in the abilities of the research team put together and sent here by my immediate superior. I simply wonder whether their time might be better employed on the main site. Nevertheless, it is comforting to know that the actions of every member of the organization are carefully choreographed and controlled by those far outranking myself, both in stature and wisdom, and with this in mind, I feel fully justified in filing an official request for further manpower. We have already lost a number of workers to unforeseen events, largely while engaging in the studies mentioned earlier and further investigation of the area calls for volunteers to carry out tasks altogether too hazardous in nature to whisk the well-being of more elevated organization members. In particular, the tunnel system above the secondary site requires immediate cartography. That Xeno officer sounded like he was doing a lot of ass-kissing, if you ask me. Either that or just covering it. Or covering his own, because, uh... Yeah. Someone's obviously not too, not too pleased with his superior's decisions. But he'll roll with them, that's for sure. Not like he has much of any other choice. Okay, since there was nothing in the tool shed, I guess we have to go to excavation then. And I'm starting to wonder about Red's mental stability. But according to the uh, workshop note, he is a bit, uh, off. Or was a bit off. I guess he's just not exactly... And more of the voices. I'm just not going to pay attention anymore. Piercing white light. Still not enough to illuminate the whole room. Oh, it looks fine to me. Well... That must be the tunnel leading to the storeroom. It's pretty high, though. There's a draft coming from that dank-looking hole up there. All the same, it's hardly inviting. In fact, it's the complete opposite. What's this? The rock itself looks as if it's given up on life and begun to decay like the rest of this place. What the hell is this? 
It looks like some kind of excavation, although not like any mining operation I've ever seen. I don't know where that mist is coming from, but I don't fancy getting any closer to find out. Well then. These lamps are much newer than the rest of the mine equipment. Are they? That one looks dead. Could have been damaged when I got the power on. The longer piece of this ladder has been shattered by something strong enough to rend metal in two. Shorter piece of the fractured ladder lying on a bed of scattered metal splinters. It's a big flat plane of rock, probably used for loading. Almost looks like some kind of altar. Well, that's interesting. What's this? Supplies in this box of military. They can't be more than 20 years old. This box should be as ancient as the rest of the line, but it looks in... The <laughs> rest of the mine. My bad. But it looks in better nick. The side facing that excavation seems more corroded. Does it? You know, whatever. All these supply crates are filled to the brim with bottled water. Why leave all this behind? I heard you. What are you? Show yourself. Oh, it's an artifact. And a note. Excavation findings. The test substance continues to defy identification. Both chemical and xeno investigations failed to produce meaningful results. Testing continues. Test 102, bromine test. Normal, pH 5. Test 103, acid amide test. Negative. Test 104, ammonia NH3. Negative and unreactive. Test 105, hydrochloric acid solution. Negative for sulfate, sulfide, and chlorate ions. Test 106, standard hallucinogenics. Mild intoxicant. Tests abandoned due to most su test subjects suffering massive internal hemorrhaging within one to two hours. Ew. Yikes. Test 107. Positive, negative metal cations. Incomplete. Test 108. Human hallucinogenics. Incomplete. Testing of the gaseous fog has been considerably more successful. It appears to be a harmless blend of sulfur, chlorine, and aromatic amine, which gives it the floating visual effect. Please note that harmless here is used in the xenochemic sense. It is harmless insofar as we have identified it, and so can take the necessary safety measures. If directly ingested, it would naturally be lethal. Test 159. Potassium dichromate paper. Positive for sulfur. Test 161. Litmus test. Negative for all but chlorine. Test 301. Hydrochloric acid solution. Positive for aromatic amide. Work continues on the issue of transporting the substance. So far, removing it from its dormant location causes its base state to radically change, producing massive heat to the detriment of three workers, one of whom is no longer operational due to his injuries. Following heat dissipation, the substance appears to turn dead, unreactive to every test we have the equipment to run. The prevailing theory is that somehow, the disruption of the material causes it to enter hugely accelerated chemical decay. We estimate its half-life to be approximately 0.4 seconds. Wow, that's a, that's a really short half-life. Now, is that just um, an explosive kind of heat half-life reaction? Or is it more of the uh, radioactive sense? Now, there is a hooky thing, so... For better or for worse, it looks like I can climb up into the tunnel mouth. I'll need to get up pretty high to get a good grip of the ladder. Alright. That's probably what this altar is for. So let's go ahead and shove this chest over there. Eh. 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 There we go. Alright. Let's drag one of these boxes over here. These aren't sliding very well, I'll just say that. Come on. Now, if these are all water supplies, I wonder if they left them behind because of the, uh... possible contamination by whatever the substance is over there. 
Whoa, hold on. There we go. I made it. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, now I've got no choice to move on. Whatever made this tunnel its home is clearly made it unstable as well. God. Oh boy. Nothing lays eggs that big. They're leathery, so can't be mammalian. More likely amphibious or insectoid. I really don't like the way they're moving. I don't either. Let's just, uh, let's go. And it sounds like they're hatching. Oh boy. What was that? I don't even care if I'm going crazy. I'm blocking that tunnel off. What is this? Ugh. I hope this came from an animal, but I have my suspicions I need to get out of here. It's a good idea. Uh, left or right? That's... Uh, nope. Nope, 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 nope. That's not. And they're hatching. Oh, boy. What is this? I can barely see the paraffins in my eyes. Flammable substance. Boom. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. That is not what I meant to do at all. Okay. I'm pretty sure I just set myself on fire right there. Ew, ew, ew. Okay. A broken paraffin lamp, highly flammable. Haha, <laughs> suck it, spiders. Ooh. My. Now, what is off this way? Oh, more eggs. Oh, boy. Um, come on. Okay, hopefully this place doesn't have eggs. Now you should find yourself in the watering game no. of conversation space. With a tunnel above you from times ahead. In this tunnel, for both our sakes, be careful, not curious. I have already spoken to you about the cat, and repeating myself is not only out of the question, but out of the window and climbing down the guttering. There are spiders in the tunnels that love to suck on the human fluids. So do not disturb the walls. They are fragile like the china vase in the hooves of the boar. This guy has a very interesting way of speaking. What is this? It looks organic, but smells highly acidic. Okay, so I'm guessing if we walk in there, we're probably going to get ourselves killed. So I'm guessing that's what this rock is for? That apparently we can pick up, but cannot throw worth a darn. Alright. So what's down here? Uh oh. Uh, break this? Nope. Oh shit, I'm dead. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Ow. Whoopsie. Okay, I think I had the right idea with um, breaking those boards. Yeah. Now, hopefully... Okay, good. Cool. We are all right. We are not okay. This is really bad. Oh, boy. This pickaxe isn't digging through this rubble. I'm a dead man. Break it. Feels like it's closing in. I've got to get out. Out! Go. Not gonna look back. I don't care. I'm just not gonna. What is this? Finally, that must be the storage room. Thank God. I'm. I'm still alive. I'm sorry. I just had to make the silly voice. There it's should locked. be some insect repellent in that red and white cross box in that room, just in case those spiders found your flesh delicious. How does my brain flesh know your fluids are leaking? Because the red tricked you! <laughs> <laughs>
of the spidery tunnel was far from a necessary evil. More so, it served as a well-deserved punishment. You thought my mind had been lost to the ravages of time, but poetic justice has struck with a sonnet and an eight-legged baptism of fire. With justice now served cold, I hope that we can be good friends. Now reclaim the key and go-go juice, and find a way to the mining monster. I don't like red very much now. <laughs> Okay, that leads out, and since we're in storage, I think that would lead out to the main hall. Wait, this was locked a minute ago, what the hell? Was it just not going the right way? Lots of useless equipment. Hey, flares! I'll take this. Come to think of it, I actually haven't used any of these. Um, uh, where'd we get the dynamite from? Obviously, I'm paying attention to what I'm picking up. Not. Let's house the interior ventilation system. Okay. No, it was this where I tried, I think. Yeah, this one's locked. This vent system is snake all over the storage bay. Looks like a tight squeeze. I don't fancy it unless I absolutely have to. Well, I can understand, but uh, I'm personally not claustrophobic, so I don't really care. Lots of useless equipment. What is this? Hey! What is that? An old storage locker, once home to posters of playmates, now just home to dust and decay. It's a vehicle key. According to Red, I just need to find a can. I just need to find a can of gasoline as well. It should be somewhere around here. May as well be empty. More useless equipment. Anything behind here? No? Alright. More of those vents. I wonder, do we have to... I guess we do have to go through here. Well, that was pointless. Uh... Okay. That was random. Control room must have seen a lot of use back when the mine was operational, but it looks pretty desolate now. No reason why this mechanical arm shouldn't still be working. Um, despite the fact that it looks at old, that it looks about as old as the rest of the mine does. <laughs> okay. And that is some steam. Oh. Wait a minute. It was locked. It was just blocked. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's keep that open. Is there anything in here that's useful? No, apparently not. I just don't get it. How long could have this been running for? I don't know. But I'm assuming that steam is just as deadly as the other stuff that we um, ran into earlier. And that looks like another uh, old artifact that we can save in, or save with. Painting's peeling on this old locker. It's bound to be rusted shut. Or not. What the? Someone's been reading up on Inuit religion. Greenland Myths. Inuit Mythology, Christian Foresight, first published in 1903. Over the past hundred years, our people have seen something of religious revelation. The Kalalit and Inuit in general might be have said, or might be said, to have seen the error of our ways, and Christianity has become increasingly embraced throughout the Arctic communities. It is the purpose of this paper to explore the true roots of our long-held beliefs, and to uncover how they might be justified today in our newfound enlightenment. As such, this essay will be the first I have written in English, as opposed to our native Kalalek. Animate? That doesn't look right for an M. And near it? 
Okay. It is no coincidence that the word Anarnek be bears resemblance to the English word angel. Okay. I don't see the resemblance, but whatever. The Anarnet are the Inuit equivalent of the soul, an undying entity released in the death of its worldly body. The concept itself is obviously well grounded in decent Christian belief. However, previous thought has been blasphemous to the extent that souls are attributed to all beings, man or beast. To claim such a thing would be to imply that the killing of a beast for food is the same as the murder of your fellow man, and such a belief simply cannot be held by the civilized Inuit. Um... I'm kind of seeing where this is, I think I see where this is going, and I don't really like it. Turngate. Legends speak of disembodied spirits, malicious in nature, sabotaging tools, turning hunts bad, and at times even possessing the weak or unfortunate. A turngak appears to have no recognized or agreed origin, both in terms of the legend itself and the individual being, causing great doubt to be entirely justifiable. Can we, in our Christian foresight, really believe in possessions and evil spirits? It seems perfectly clear to this writer that the real origin of the Turngate belief lies in the Christian demon, for, as we are taught by the generous and selfless Moravian Church, without whose support our people would no doubt have starved many years ago, the demon is capable of possession and of countless other atrocities, which only the good Christian man can avoid through a lifetime of humility and devotion. What? Angakuit. With the conclusions reached above, the status of the cherished Angakuk, the tribe shaman, should be obvious. Such people are in league with the Turngate demons, working side by side to control and contain the Kalalit people. We have no need for such superstition and suspicion breeding people in our Christian ways. The Protestant priest can perform all the Angakuit's duties and more beside. God. The final challenge of a work such as this should be to find the nature of the Christian God and to ask why he has not been present for so many years of Inuit belief. Until recently, the Inuit people wrongly attributed to Anar Anarnet almost godlike status in certain cases and treated the Turngate as the devil incarnate. It is no major leap of faith to suggest that such beliefs have been underpinned by a central concern that there has been something missing in Inuit life. That something is indubitably God. I hope that my findings have informed and enlightened the atheistic few that remain in Inuit culture and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to redeem their souls. Peter Henry Natcher. Peter Henry Natcher, you can go fuck yourself. First off, I don't see what the resemblance is other than the first two letters between these two words. I am not seeing the resemblance whatsoever. And this whole section right here, to claim such a thing would be to imply the killing of a beast for food, blah blah blah. There is a matter concerning respect towards um, who you kill and what you are doing with them afterwards. Because with a beast, um, Inuit killed them out of respect. They knew that they were killing them and they were using their bodies for food, for clothing, and in some cases for shelter and for whatever they had many purposes for them but this this would say that this would basically say that you're disrespecting them by putting their bodies to good use which is not really the case and there's also the the point where you're not going to likely be eating your fellow being on your fellow human unless um, you're in a point of starvation and humans tend to not have that much in the way of fat relative to animals such as walruses compared to fish you're probably going to have a bit more weight but fish are mostly muscle. They don't have near the amount of blubber that a whale or a walrus is going to have, or a seal even. 
Um, and that was actually a major issue when the whites came along and basically took over the um, the whole fishing trade. Because walruses provide really nice skins to sell off to other people. And to resolve this problem with the Inuit, they had the Inuit, the whites had the Inuit eat fish. The issue is, however, that a lot of Inuits started having problems living in the cold climates because they were suddenly not having the protein and the fat that walruses have. Fish will, sure, have a lot of protein in them, but a lot of the Inuit needed the extra layer, the extra fat in the walrus meat to survive in the cold, and the fish simply didn't provide that. And that caused some really, really major problems. So this, this whole thing right here, I think, is stupid. The turn gate, I... doesn't really make sense, because how... is the real origin of the turn gate in the Christian demon? Because I'm pretty sure the Inuits were around with these beliefs even before Christianity existed. Because let's say it was around when Jesus Christ was... I'm not exactly sure on the origins of Christianity as far as dates, but I'm pretty sure it came around the year that Jesus either died or whatever. So let's say for 2,000 years. And I'm going off that. But the Inuit have been in North America for thousands of years. Much longer than Christianity was ever out as a religion. So they would have this out before it was even a concept. So this whole thing right here I think is also stupid. And also the Inuits were around before this Moravian church was ever here. So this is completely stupid too. The Angakuit, um, the tribe shamans had a lot of knowledge that was passed down. Maybe not necessarily the reasons behind them, but they were not just giving baptisms or um, blessing people or providing a communication between the people and the spirits beyond. They were also kind of healers in a sense. Um, now, I may actually be wrong on this because shamans and witch or witch doctors or whatever you want to call them, witch doctors are ten, tend to normally be a bit more in the gray area. But shamans, medicine men, whatever have you, they tend to be more for the well-being of the tribes. And obviously, if this is an Inuit that's writing this thing, he has obviously been indoctrinated by the missionaries and is completely just not understanding what his elders were telling him. And is just not believing what anything that this person... that um... <laughs> This cracks me up, too. We have no need for such superstition and suspicion. Isn't that what Christianity is, though? It's a religion. That's belief in something else. So how is that really not a superstition? Because you're believing in something else that you have basically no evidence except for a book to support it. And anything, anyone can write anything in a book. That is just... I mean, just pick up anything from the fiction books. Some of them are really well made, and some of them you just look at them and go, yeah, yeah, right. And same thing with the history books. You will find stuff in archaeological digs that do not correlate whatsoever with what is in a textbook at school. I know this personally. So basically this entire essay is just stupid. So that was my rant on religion for today. I hope you all enjoyed. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and save. I 
felt something that time that I didn't feel before, but I'm sure it's always been there. It's as if a small part of me is still trapped inside the artifact. It's saving your consciousness. That's exactly what it's doing. Alright, let's see, it. let's see if this uh, thing is working. Apparently it is. Very jerkily so. I'm assuming we have to get up there since... Um, we have no means otherwise of getting past this uh, steam right here. Uh, and I'm thinking that we'll probably need this box to get over here. Is that high enough? Apparently. And more voices. Great. Shut up! Not listening. Hey, can of gasoline. Cool. I feel certain that this can gasoline tank is what Red was referring to. I would agree. That is not quite what I wanted to do. There we go. Can I get up this way? There we go. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> Alright. I think we are all set to get out of here. Okay, let's see. Now... The big quest. Wait, we have a saw. Wait, 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 what's the description on that? A saw. Rusty enough that I wish I'd had that tetanus shot, but still sharp enough to saw through wood. <laughs> Just don't cut yourself with it. That's all I gotta say. Alright, let's go through to the auxiliary shafts. We should be able to saw through the uh, wooden board now. Since apparently we can't pick it up. There we are. Very cool. And more dogs. Great. And there's a dog. Hey, puppy. Nope, he's just gonna screw off. Okay. That's cool. I'm debating, do I really want to take the rest of these dogs out, or do I just want to, um, go around them? Is there anything over here? No. Alright, dog is coming this way. Arr yourself. Let's go! Oh, whack! dog around here? I guess we'll find out in a minute since he's calling out to him. Oh! Oh! Hi there! <laughs> Two and one. How about that? Where'd they go? There's one. Alright.
Hey, puppy. Arr. Go get me, boy. You dead? All right, that's one dog down. Now, where's this other one? Because it was around here somewhere. Ah, there it is. You, puppy. Hey, buddy. What's up? You dead? Something over there? No. Alright. Now, what is this? 